Hello everybody. So today I want to use JSON Web Tokens to expire a web session. So basically what I'm saying is when you log into a website and use a website, for example, the website that I'm working on, you log into the website, you do what you need to do, and you just leave the browser open. After a while, the browser will log you out automatically without doing, you doing anything. I think you might have seen this before. One of the places I have seen this implemented is in banking websites. Banking websites use a lot of this uh, idea to secure your banking information, right? You log into your website, you check your account balance, and then maybe you forgot. You forgot to log out, right? The website automatically logs you out after some time. Um, sometimes the website can even warn you. Say, hey, Adamu, by the way, my name is Adamu. Hey, Adamu, you have one minute. If you don't do anything, we'll log you out. So a session, right, in this regard, is basically when you log into your website. You go to a website, you log in. By the time you log in, that's when your session begins. Now I can say, when you log into my site, you have 30 minutes. And I'll log you out. It doesn't matter what you do or whether or not uh, you are using this site or if you forgot to close it or to log out, I will log you out. And that's what I want to do here. So it's not very complicated. Now, in my uh, banking website, what they do is I log in. Every time I interact with the website, my session starts. So I log in, my session starts, okay? I continue to, I check my account balance. That click, when I click to check my account balance, it resets my session to zero. Now, for example, let's say I check my account balance and I'm done, and I never interacted with the website, my session will begin to count towards the expiry time. And once that time reaches and I don't interact with the website, then the website automatically logs me out. Now that is a little bit complicated um, and that's not what I want to do here, right? What I want to do is when you log in, your session begins and you have, let's say, 30 minutes and I will log you out whether or not you're interacting with the website. I want to do this so you have the ba uh, a basic idea on how to implement this technology. Um, so JSON Web Token helps you, or helps you basically achieve this by giving you a token when you log in. I will give you a token, okay? And every now and then, I will be checking that token to see if it expires. So um, that's basically in summary how kind of the flow goes. You log into my website, I'll give you a token. I'll basically give you a number, some random uh, number and letters, okay? And... As you use my website, as you use my website, I will be checking it. I will be checking your, your token to see if it, the, uh, it has expired. And once it expired, I will log you out. Um, so without further ado, let's see how we can uh, start uh, coding this stuff. So just in web token, if you want to read more about it, please go to jwt.io. And you read, uh, you can see uh, what the 
the the the technology is about. Obviously, this uh, lesson is not about this whole token, um, but hopefully, as we code, um, I will kind of explain through that what that what JSON of token is. Uh, but really, for now, uh, if you don't remember anything about JSON of token, just know that it's a way to do some kind of authentication between two people or two systems, right? Uh, when you're on your computer and you're interacting with my site, that is two parties, right? Your computer, you, and my website. They are on a totally different computers, right? My 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 where I store, where I keep my the resources of my website. So that's the HTML, the JavaScript, all the code basically is not in your computer. I started in someone else's computer or a server somewhere, right? When you interact with my website, it's basically seen as me and you talking. So when, let's say, we start talking, uh, aka you log into my website, I will hand you a number, okay? I'll say, hey, take this. Take this number, and... Time to time, as you browse my website, I will ask you to give me that number. I'll say, hey, let's say your name is uh, John. I'll say, hey, John, hand me over that number, please. And then once you hand me over the number, my server, okay, where I keep my website, will check to see, yeah, has, uh, has Jason's uh, um, session expired? I'm like, no, not yet. But remember, when you log in, right, before I hand you over the, sto the token, I will set expiry date inside the token. So, for example, you log in, I say, okay, let me send John this token. And this token has, inside of it, has an expiry, day, uh, expiry time of 10 minutes. Okay? And I will hand you over the token. The token is very gibberish that you could hardly really tell what it is. Let me show you an example of what it looks like. This is an example of a JSON web token. As you can see, it's really gibberish. It's really hard to decode what this is. But inside of this, somewhere, there is an expiry date. So when you log into my website, I will hand you over this token and within it will contain the expiry time. It could be 10 minutes, it could be one hour, it could be 30 days. It just depends on how I want to implement that. So I hand you over, and time to time, I will require you to give me that token, and I'll be checking to see if your session expires. And there's a lot more you could do with uh, JSON Web Token. For example, time to time, as you log, oh, no, no, not that, let me give you a better example. For example, you log into my website, okay? Uh, you go directly to your setting. You want to change your password, right? I will. I might ask you for the token. I say, all right, John, give me that token that I handed you earlier when you log in. Give me that token. When you give me, I will check to make sure that... You are the one who actually requested to change your password. I don't want to go deep into this, so I don't deviate from why I'm doing this video. But I can always, I can, I can put any information I want inside that token. Your name. When you first log in, I can put your name, your username, anything I want inside a token, and then give it to you at the beginning. And then anytime you want to do anything, I'll say, all right, John, give me that token. Let me make sure that you are the one that want to change your, uh, your, your password. All right, I'm going to stop here. Hopefully you get the summary, the gist of some of the things that uh, JSON Web Tokens are used for. 
Now, um, let's see how I'm going to do this. Um, all right. If I can actually navigate to my... All right. I will... Let me start from here. All right. So this is my website. This is the website that I am working with. Let me adjust this a little bit to make sure that I'm... Doing, I'm showing you what I need to show you, right? All right. So, this is my website. And when you log in, let me log out. When you log in here, as soon as you log in, I want to give you a token. Let me log in. All right, why is it taking time to log me in? Let's see to make sure. All right, I think I know why. You can't see my screen, but let me share that with you. Um, no, not that one, this one. So basically my, my app crashed, so I need to restart the server. Once that uh, restarts, okay. Oh, I think I know why. I know why. I need to remove this because that's what we are going to be doing. Okay, yeah. So I, as you can see now, my server is listening to request on port 8080. All right. So let's go back to my website so I can show you here. All right, so when you log in, let me refresh this. Ah, apparently my account has been suspended. Um, I was actually playing around with this uh, couple moments before I start recording. <laughs> so I need to go to my database basically. Um, to show you. Sorry, you didn't I didn't I wasn't even showing you what I was doing. So this was it. Okay, let me try to log in here. So it says my account has been suspended, blah 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 blah. I implemented this feature and I was trying it out. I was testing it. So let me go to my to the database and change this. I am using MongoDB. Uh, MongoDB, in case you're not aware, is a document-based database as against relational, as against table. Um, so that's what I use for my uh, to store um, data of my websites. All right, so this is the document. This is how MongoDB stores um, information, basically. Um, this, this is obviously not, not a lesson about MongoDB, but uh, yeah. So I need to change this active property to true. Okay. Let me close this. So now I should be able to log in. But then I have the inf I have the wrong password. Okay. So now I'm able to log in. So what am I trying to say earlier? 
when you log into my website, what I want to do is to is for my back end. I use Express Node.js for my back end. I want to tell my server to to generate that the token and store it in your browser. Um, this way I will keep the token and I'm going to show you where I'm going to store the token so that you have an idea of what is it that I'm doing. Nope, not the network, but the application, I believe. Yes. I'm not sure if you are seeing what I'm doing. Ah, uh, yes, you are not seeing. I apologize. Let me repeat. Let me correct my mistake. All right. Now you should probably be seeing what I'm doing a little bit. Okay. Let me take this uh, a little up so you can see. Okay. So I need to go to the application tab. And on my left, there's a storage area, right? And then there's local storage, session uh, storage, and, and so on and so forth. And I want to look into inside local storage, which I've already done. That's usually what I do. If, if I close it, this is how it's going to look like. So I'll click on here and click on localhost 300 because that is the website name basically so as you can see there are a couple of things that i'm storing on your browser when you go to when you're using my website right one of them should be the token you see this gibberish number that is the token um let me see if I, we can see it properly. Yeah, here we go. It's a very long gibberish number, but that is basically to, the web token. So when you log into my website, I will store this web token inside of your browser. And as you browse my website, for example, you go to your profile. At any stage, I can make your browser send me the token. Any place, I mean, uh, as you interact with my website, basically anywhere in my website that you interact with, I can, um, I can, I can write a code that will send me, send uh, my server the web token. And that is the mechanism of that back and forth. It's actually a function that I need to write. And that's what I intend to show you in this lesson. Um, but yeah, that's basically what it is. You log in. Uh, as soon as you log in, I'll give you the token. And as you browse, I'll be checking the token to see if the time limit that I give you has expired has expired or not if it has expires um then i will log you out then you have to log in to restart that timer but all of this is done on the background you have no idea you know you don't need to know like um you don't need to like remember it just logs you out and then you can log in back again to restart okay so let's let me actually start coding uh, let's see. All right. So this is my front end code. So basically, when you go to my website, right? This is the code that you see. I mean, you don't see it. It's not like HTML that you see, but this is the code that runs on the background of what you see. And that is where I need to start. 
that is where I need to start. Once you log in, I will tell that function to, to get a token, to request a token from the server. It gets that token and then you should store it on your browser. So, um, let's start. Now, obviously, I started making this website without you. So you might have, you might, you may not have an idea what I'm doing here, but really I want, I, I, if you can, let's concentrate on the new code that I'm going to write. Forget about anything you see here. Even if you don't know what I'm, some of the things that I'll introduce, um, if you can just stay with me a little bit and at least get the idea on how to do this, okay? I'm using React. Here, this code is React. React is a JavaScript library for making user interface. So basically, is a library that you can use to create what people see on your website. Um, so, Let me start by saying something like this. Check, is it? Check token expiring. Now, like I've mentioned before now, right? I'm gonna write a function that will request, that will send, first of all, um, well, okay, let me make sure that this is actually clear. I'm going to write a function that will send the token that you, you get when you log in to the server for checkup. That's what this function will be doing. It's going to take that token that I gave you, technically not me, my server, gives you and it's going to send it to for checkup to the server time to time all right so i'm going to use okay a hook called use effect if you don't know anything about use effect please do not beat up yourself this lesson is not about use effect. Really, my intention um, with this lesson is to give you an idea how, I'm, how I want to implement this on my website. So basically, see this use effect as a function, okay? So what do I want to do in this, in this function? Well, I want to get the token okay, and send it to the server. Well, what is the one of the most common way to interact between your computer and a server? Well, there are, there are many ways. Uh, there are many protocols to do that. Um, well, basically any, any address that you go, any address that you put on your browser, right? Let's say facebook.com. You are making a request to the server. You are make you are telling Facebook.com to give you something. That's what that is. So I want to make a request inside this function. One of the software that I like to use, a code, is called Axios. Axios is used to make a request to someone else's computer or server. So I'm gonna use that. Um, okay, so let me start this constant. I'm gonna store this in 
Huh. Let me see if I can start in a way that will, will be logical, okay? So let me make the request. Axios.post. And when you make a request, you usually make a request through an address. Like I told you, when you go to facebook.com, you are asking Facebook to give you everything it stores in that address, basically. So I'm going to make up an address here, and I'm going to call it check token expiry. I don't know what that is. Check uh, token expiry. Okay. So what this will do is it will make a request to this address, which I should have um, in, in my server, right? To check that. To Once my server sees this request, it knows what to do. And that will also code that. Um, okay, so we know the address, basically, which is this. We want to make the request. But like I've mentioned earlier, we need to send something to the server. We need to send the token for checkup. So how do you do that? Well, you can simply include that um, in in between curly bracket braces, whatever you call it. So let's call that uh, token. Um, because we are inside an object, everything has to be key value pair. So I can't just write the token here, whatever the token is, I can not just write it here, okay? Uh, I mean, I can, but even this will be interpreted as key and value. If if you don't know what I'm saying, please do not be of yourself. The takeaway here is, I want to include the token in, in between the curly bracket, the, the curly braces. If you want to send anything to the server, Open a bracket immediately after the address here and write what you want to send to the server from your computer. Okay, so token, if I can spell. So this is the key. The token is the key. What will be the value? The value will be the thing that I want to send. And the thing that I want to send is the token. But that is not the token, right? The token, I stored it inside of your browser. And I have, this is how I will usually, this is how I will tell your browser to give me the token. So state that you use a token. I basically when when you log in, and I can show you briefly here. As soon as you log into my website, I will I will tell my database, my 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 server, sorry, to send your user ID, your token, your username, last name, and everything that I will need at some point when you log in. All the information that I will need when you log in, I will ask my server to send it to your browser and I will store it in your browser, all of this information. And once I store it in the browser, I will also store that information in the state of my application. Now, if you have no idea what a state is, please don't beat up yourself. What I'm basically saying is, 
I store it in your browser and I also st store it in the code. Within the code of my website. That's basically what I'm saying. So let me go back to that function. Ah, too long of a journey. I think we are here, right? So state the user the token is where I store that token in my code. In the code that is in your browser, right? Your browser has many code, right? The browser code, my code as well that you requested. Uh, and many more. So if nothing that I said makes sense to you, just know that this is pointing to the token. So this is the token. Okay. Now we need to clean this up a little bit. This alone will send the request successfully, but there's going to be so many things we need to, there are going to be so many things that are wrong with this. We need to do the cleanup. Now, when you send the request, I need to get by that request. When it sends the token to the server, I need a way to store the response from the server. And this is how exactly I'm going to do it. I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it a response response and I'm going to store whatever the this check from the server returns. So what do I want to do when that response gets back? Well, this is what I want. I will make my server once my server gets your token, I'll make it do basically two things. If the, the session hasn't expired, return true. If the session expires, return false. So if this response returns false, uh, false, I can't say false, false, then I know the token expires. Then I need to do something with that. So let's try. Let's let's try to implement that using code. If response the data, I will tell you what the data the data comes from. Okay. So if response the data for now. Let me say true, okay? There are many ways that we can refactor this code that I'm doing. So I want to be as clear as possible, just in case you are new to code. Um, I don't want to complicate things because right now I can just do something like this. If response.data is the same thing for me as, as this. So, but let's leave it as this, okay? All right, so what happens when it's true? So like I told you already, I want to tell my server to check your token. If your token is still valid, that means it has still not expires, send true. Okay? So if it is true, that means you are still good, your token hasn't expired. What do I want to do? Basically nothing. I absolutely do not want to do, uh, I absolutely want to do nothing. Do nothing. Okay? If response, I still haven't tell you what that data is, right? I will. 
if response the data equals to false, then do something. Do something. Okay? So that's basically the idea. Now, this code, as you can see, I don't need to do anything. So really, I don't need it. I absolutely don't need it. If it comes through, no, no coding anything to handle that, it means it won't do anything. You don't have to do anything. That's what that means. So why would I leave the code there if I can remove it and make the space looks uh, look a, a lot nicer, a little nicer, right? So, okay, so I need to do something. If I get a response of false, well, what do I want to do? What is that thing that I want to do? I want to log you out and display why. That's basically it. Now, what is this data? This data has nothing. If you are going to use Axios, this data has nothing to do with how you design your code. This data comes with this variable. If I name this variable res, the res variable will still come with, it's going to come as an object. And I really hope you know what an object is. It's going to come with an object, and that object would have several property inside of it. One of those properties is the data property. What is the data property? The designers of this protocol where you on your computer, you can talk to someone else's computer, design it, design it, design it in such a way that if I store, if I want to, if I want my server, right, to return, to send you anything, if you request something to my server and I want my server to send any information, all the information I put there, that I want you to see or do something on your browser is going to be inside the data property. Like I said, every object has a property, right? So that property has a value. The value can be something or it can be nothing. So the value, the value of the data property would be the information I send from the server. And it has to be exactly spelled like this. If I spell it in any other way, let's say date, it's going to be uh, different, something else. So it has to be exactly data. So basically here, what I'm saying is, if what is inside this object is false, then do something. So that's what data in summary is. Every response from a server has that data property. Um, all right. So we're gonna I'm gonna log you out and display why. Um, all right. I am gonna stop here and then I'm gonna continue recording later. Thank you.